Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, we'll be discussing certain details about how an analytical petty cash book is different from the cash book that we have originally prepared. We'll get to know a few more details of this, like the types of petty cash book and how to prepare this analytical petty cash book under Impress system. Let's go ahead and figure that out. Analytical petty cash book. Now this cash book itself states or probably talks about the type of cash book. We'll first discuss what we have when we talk about petty cash book. So what do you mean by the word petty? It basically means all small things. We always keep on saying this is a petty issue or this is something really, really petty. So when we talk about petty things, that means you are basically talking about small things or trivial things or trifle things basically. So when we talk about petty cash book, we are ideally talking about small expenses for any kind of organization that keep happening on day in day out basis. So now we have already discussed or we have already got to know that what petty means. So when we talk about the cash book system, we basically talk about the analytical cash book or the cash book that we are talking about when it comes to any kind of cash transactions. So when we talk about cash transactions, we basically have a cash book. Similarly, we have all small expenses maintained in a petty cash book. When we talk about expenses of cash book, there are two kinds of variants. One, that are large transactions. Second, that will be petty transactions. That means small transactions. Imagine if all these transactions are put under one book itself, that means cash book it becomes really cumbersome to differentiate or to further explain which transaction is petty and which transaction isn't. Hence, we have segregated the cash book under two types. One is a normal cash book. Second will be a petty cash book. Now we'll be discussing today about petty cash book itself. I've jotted down certain points for you, for your reference rather. We'll go ahead with each of those points and understand in detail what petty cash book really means and what is the definition and probably at the ideology behind maintaining a petty cash book. Let's go ahead and figure that out. Now you all know that the cash book ideally works like or acts like a journal and a ledger all in one. In the previous video, when we have understood that how a cash book is prepared, we already know that the transactions were listed there and we just had to post those transactions. That means the journal entries were skipped and we directly had the posting into a ledger. The reason beyond cash book itself acts like all the debit transactions or all the receipts or payments are supposed to be debited, credited as per the nature. So when we talk about receipts and payments, we used to debit the receipts and we used to credit the payments here. Now it acts like a journal entry itself and simultaneously every journal entry goes like a posting. Hence a cash book acts like a journal as well as a ledger. That's the first line that we have explained. Let's further go ahead and see what other points have been mentioned under the cash book and as a part of petty cash book system. Petty cash book records transactions which are really small. That means we can call them as small transactions which are recorded under petty cash book. So when we talk about petty cash book system, we ideally talk about what are the kind of things that we're supposed to record under this cash book system. When we talk about cash book system, we can record n number of transactions. But out of those n number of transactions, we have certain small transactions which happen or which happen on recurring basis. That means certain expenses like day-to-day -day stationery, day-to-day -day postage, day-to-day -day courier charges, all such expenses are on recurring basis and all such expenses are done in cash which are of very small amount. So when we talk about petty cash book system, we ideally put in all these details under this category. We have mentioned certain examples below. Let's go through it. Now expenses like stationery, postage, food, conveyance. Conveyance will always relate to travel. So the daily travel, the daily food expenses, the daily stationery, the daily postage expenses, all are considered as petty expenses and hence they are recorded under petty cash book. So when we talk about petty cash book, we basically talk about small expenses. Let's talk about an example 
when you take your own organization. So when you talk about your own organization, there will be daily expenses in and out. That means you will have cash transactions, you will have cash receipts, cash payments, but out of those cash receipts and payments, you will also have certain day-to-day -day expenses like travel expenses, like food expenses, like postage, storing, stationery. All such expenses are called as small expenses. Now, these expenses are basically trivial and that's the reason we have a different cash book for their reference. That means all such transaction will be maintained by the cashier under petty cash book. Hence, when we talk about petty cash book, these are all small references or small transactional references which are maintained by the cashier in a different book itself other than the cash book that he has. So, cash book is responsible or the cashier is basically responsible for handling cash book one, which is supposed to be maintained for all the cash receipts and cash payments, the bigger transactions rather, and the petty cash book, which is also responsible or is supposed to be handled by the cashier itself. The reason being all small transactions are also should be accounted so that you can have a track or monitoring of all these transactions. Hence, we have petty cash book system. Let's go on to the next sheet and understand few more details about it. Just like in cash book, how we record all our transactions in a specific chronological and systematic way. Similarly, in petty cash book, all such transactions will be recorded in chronological and systematic way. Let's take for an example, if you have 10 transactions which are petty lined between 1st to 20th of April of any year. So you will have to record the first transaction that is the transaction that happened on 1st April 1st. And after that, following dates, that means 2nd, 3rd, 4th April, 5th April. So transactions maintained in a specific order, like day to day wise. That's the reason I'm emphasizing on the word day to day. 1st April, the transactions that have happened, you'll be recording that transactions in one specific column. Next, the next specific day transaction will be recorded and so on. It will go until 20th of April as because the example that relates to 1st to 20th of April. Similarly, for the week transaction or for the month transaction, you'll all record them into chronological way and in a systematic order. That will help you to further analyze the transactions that are happening on weekly basis, the transactions that are happening on fortnightly basis in case if you have to compare these details. So that's the reason it is supposed to be maintained in an analytical and chronological order. Let's further go ahead and see what are the points have been listed down. Now, every book that is prepared is bared by certain responsibility. The person who prepares this is responsible for the quick and efficient in a flawless preparation of these details. Now, if supposing you are the accountant, you will be held responsible for all the accounting details that are held for any specific organization. So any organization who has a specific person in place who performs that job of recording, classifying and analyzing transactions will be held responsible for any errors in it. So in case of petty cash book, we have a petty cashier who is held responsible for the day in day out activities mentioned under the petty cash book system. So hence, there will be a petty cashier who will be the responsible person. Let's figure out what more details have been mentioned down here. Now, what are the reasons why we have a petty cash book different as compared to the normal cash book? There are different advantages of its own. The reason why we have impressed or probably enhanced the petty cash book system or we have implemented the petty cash book system is with the sole purpose that there are different advantages because the first reason being it is a cumbersome and tedious process whereby if you record all the transactions no matter whichever transaction they are but all the cash transactions without segregating them into petty and bigger transactions in one simple book if you do that part or if you are doing such part then in such cases it becomes a tremendous or voluminous options or probably the number of transactions are too much because it is not the matter of fact that no matter how small your organization is there are going to be numerous transactions which are dealt in cash hence when we talk about numerous transactions which are dealt in cash and which are supposed to be accounted for our reference hence there will be a lot of transactions going under one book to ease up this process and to ensure that all the big transactions of the business are 
kept in a different book of account and similarly all the small transactions which are day in day out transactions are kept in a different book of account with the only ideology to ease in up the process or to ease in up references in near future if you have to go back in the future or probably if you have to go back in the past and figure out what all details were mentioned as a big transaction and small transactions so that you can easily monitor or track all the big transactions on one side and all the small transactions on the other that becomes easy when you have two set of different books had it been if you have clubbed these transactions into one it will be very difficult for you to analyze because then you have to manually segregate those transactions and then you have to compare which is again a time consuming process so let's go through the advantage that i mentioned down here and we'll have brief description of it The first advantage is that it is systematic and easier to audit these transactions. Now auditing means to go ahead and see whether all these transactions have been done as per the process or whether the recording, classifying and summarizing has been done as per the process. So when you talk about recording, classifying and summarizing things, it should be done in a specific order itself. Hence, when we talk about analytical petty cash book, the first advantage of keeping this different from the cash book is that it forms into a systematic and orderly way that means something that is presentable and that further helps you into auditing these details hence this is the first advantage let's go to the next sheet and figure out what are the other advantages of that it helps in easy comparison and further additional tracking or monitoring of all such petty expenses if at all these things are kept in one simple book, it will be difficult for you to further analyze and track them. But if you have kept these things into a different book, it will be easy for you to further track them down and further analyze whether there are any increase in the expenses or there are decrease in the expenses or the report is stagnant. That means if the expenses are equivalent for every month, every week, whatever the tenure will be. So when you're discussing about analytical petty cash book, you ideally need to figure out whether when the tracking happens, whether it is increasing the cash expenses of such kinds or whether there is a decrease in cash expenses of these nature. Or if all these expenses are equal, somewhere 1920 difference can be figured out. But when you're talking about expenses being stagnant, that means, for example, for the month of April, you have expenses done of 1000 rupees. For the next month, their expenses worth of rupees 995 or 990, somewhere like that. So that is called as stagnant. That means for every month, there is somewhere close by or equivalent to the previous month's expenses itself. However, if there is an increase, for example, the expense of the month of April was 1000, which is more as compared to the previous month of March, where the expenses were only 500. So there's a 100% rise over here. Now, when we talk about 100% rise, we'll have to then figure out or analyze why this expense has incurred. Has there been any, any kind of additional expenses that has been done in terms of petty expenses or petty cash book? That's what will help or that's what a petty cash book will help you analyze these details. Let's go on to the next advantage now. As discussed, it is a cumbersome and tedious process if all these transactions are recorded under one book. Hence, we have a separate book that means a petty cash book for our reference. Let's figure out the next advantage. It makes the specific cash book less voluminous and more informative. If at all, all these or all these petty transactions are removed out from the cash book and kept into a different book altogether, the cash book will look less voluminous because there are already number of transactions that go through cash book. And if you're adding these transactions also to it, the quantity of transactions or the number of transactions will increase, which will further increase your work of analyzing. Hence, if you're recording all the transactions of cash book related stuff itself within the cash book and keeping all petty cash book different, the first advantage is that the cash book becomes less voluminous and more informative and it will give you more details about what are the basic transactions that are happening day in day out about the cash flow. So when we talk about the cash flow, these expenses have major effect on cash flow as compared to the petty expenses. However, both these cash books require adequate tracking so that none of the cash book takes a toll on the other one. If an example has to be given here, 
if petty cash book transactions are increasing voluminously and there is no tracking or control on that that means the cash flow will have certain effect on it and that is supposed to be controlled hence we have two different books when we have to compare these two things now let's understand the types of systems that we have under cash book or under petty cash book here now under petty cash book we have a normal cash book and we have an analytical cash book system which has a sub clause of impressed system so we'll first understand what normal cash book is a normal petty cash book will be something which is very similar to recording all the receipts and all the payments so if you have all the receipts and payments you will then tally whether the amount of the petty cash book that you have is equivalent to the receipts that has been done so basically all the payments that have been made for the month of april or for any month specifically shows or gives out all the small expenses and how much reimbursement is supposed to be done all these expenses will be maintained under one specific book itself that means normal petty cash book however we'll have different analytical cash book system which has different type of systems within it now we'll be discussing about that part itself as the chapter or the subject or the topic line refers to analytical petty cash book under impress system let's go ahead and figure that out in the next sheet now when we talk about analytical petty cash book this is something different from the normal cash book in the normal cash book where we have only cash columns this analytical petty cash book has pre existing columns of expenses which are occurring on recurrent basis like for example if this is your cash book there is one column for cash transactions and there is another column for recurring transactions so all these transactions which are recurring in nature will be added on this column and all the transactions which happen rarely will be added in the cash column itself so when you talk about analytical petty cash book it is more informative as it will give you a segregation or it will give the management or accountant a segregation of how many recurring transactions happen in a month or in a week or as per the tenure is and how many regular transactions happen so transactions which are of frequent nature will be added into the frequent column and transactions which are of rare nature will be added under the cash column so this is the difference between the normal cash book and analytical cash book let's figure out few more differences of it the next part is that it is time saving in nature because all these transactions are recorded under one book itself that is petty cash book with different columns though whereby frequent transactions are recorded under one column and regular transactions are recorded into a different column so when this happens when we talk about these expenses then it becomes very easy for us to analyze how many management transactions or how many transactions the management can figure out that is recurring in nature and what are the expenses going on in it and similarly what are the regular transactions like the big transactions which are affecting the majority of the cash flow hence this gives you the proportion of what is the ratio as to recurring transactions and non recurring transactions which can further help the management to make any further decisions if they have to increase the impress system or probably if they have to increase the cash flow with terms of petty cash so this is the basic reason why we have analytical cash book or analytical petty cash book which has pre existing columns now let's go into the next sheet and understand few more details on that part now that we know that analytical cash book is different from the normal one because of one single column that is existing there which incurs or which has details about recurring impressed or recurring cash systems or recurring cash transactions now we'll understand what impressed system basically means we have mentioned down few lines let's go through those lines and understand what all details are included under impress system of analytical petty cash book under impress system basically this is the secondary system the primary system is analytical system itself however apart from that there is a secondary system to it which is known as impressed system so when we talk about impress system we basically talk about the different kind of method or the different kind of approach we have when we have to handle petty cash book now under this method 
the cashier is provided with lump sum amount in the start of the month. Now it can be the start of the month, the start of the week, whatever the tenure is. So if you're taking petty cash book for a month, you will be giving some amount to the cashier at the start of the month. If it is for weekly basis, you will be giving certain amount for the week itself to the cashier. Now there are certain expenses that will happen and he will record all those transactions that are happening on frequent basis, which are petty. Now this amount will be paid off from the balance that is provided to him. For example, if you have given him thousand rupees, and out of that thousand rupees, there are certain expenses for both rupees 500 done for the week or for the month, whatever the tenure is. According to that, whatever amount has been paid out as expense will be reimbursed at the end of the week or end of the month, the tenure as per. Now, if it is as per weekly tenure, then whatever expenses have been made for the week, that will be reimbursed to him or that will be reimbursed to the cashier, which will reinstate the cashier's balance. So if at the start of the week, he was given 500 rupees and at the end of the week, he has a balance of only 40 rupees. That means 460 rupees were spent in the week. At the end of the week, the accountant will go ahead and tally that total. And according to that itself, they will be provided with 460 rupees as the expense that has been made for the week. And hence, the 500 balance, that means the 500 credit balance will be reinstated again. So whatever went down will be coming back up as a complete reimbursement is done here. Let's find that out in the lines mentioned down. Now the period of accounting can be either a week, either a month or some days also. So it can be either for a week, either for a month or few days. Whatever the accounting system or the accounting organization feels to go ahead with, they can go ahead with any of the options. Now, at the end of the month, as I said, or as the end of the week or days itself, whatever tenure has been fixed, that specific amount will be reimbursed to the person. There's an example that has been mentioned on the next sheet. Let's go ahead. That will give you more clarity on this part. Now, before we go ahead with this example, let me tell you that the amount that is provided at the start of the month is also known as a float amount. So remember this word that amount is known as float amount. Now, for example, if the cashier has been provided by the accounts department, a float amount of rupees thousand as per mentioned in the example, and he has spent that amount for the week for amounting to rupees 800. Now at the end of the week, if you are taking the tenure, the balance with him is just 200 rupees. So accounts department will go ahead and make sure that all the tallies are matching the expenses made and then it will reimburse the amount so that he can give back or he can get back the complete thousand. So the balance 200 that he had is this the thousand that was given to him is here. The difference in between this will be reimbursed by the accounts department so that this balance can go back again to thousand rupees for the next week. Hence, this is how the impressed system works. There is one specific lump sum amount that is known as the float at the start of the month. There are certain expenses that are made within the month and at the end of the month or end of the week, whichever the tenure is, the reimbursed amount is given back to the specific cashier so that the same float amount can be reached. And then again, the next month expenses or next week expenses can be carried forward or further made from that specific float amount itself. So this is how an example can be given. Just for an example, if you have a glass of water and if you drank some water from it, if you fill that back again, that means the level will reach again on the water. So if the level was here and if you drank something and the level has gone here, it will again go back if you fill that thing. So this filling is done by the accounts department. Similarly, this accounts department goes ahead and reimburses that amount only after tallying all the expenses that are made with the amount of receipts that are mentioned in the specific petty cash book, which is analytical. Let's figure out a few more details on this in the next sheet. Now, as a recap of it, whatever we have studied right now, there is one thing that we need to mention. The system of petty cash book, we have only two system, ordinary system and impressed system. Ordinary system records all the receipts of all the transactions that have been done. That means the amount that is supposed to be reimbursed depends on the payment that has happened or the expenses that has happened for the month or for the week. That is ordinary system. Under impress system, 
you get some amount in advance itself which is known as a float under ordinary you don't get any float there is no advance the amount is completely reimbursed at the end of the month or at the end of the tenure however in impress system you get certain amount as advance and out of that advance you make the payments hence whatever balance is left is the balance left and that has to be reinstated to the float amount that is the only difference between ordinary system and impress system now what are the types of petty cash book that we have first is simple petty cash book which refers to the ordinary thing and the impressed cash book system also requires analytical petty cash book so analytical petty cash book under impress system and ordinary cash book or the normal simple petty cash book under ordinary system keep these things in mind let's go ahead and figure out what is the format of preparing analytical petty cash book now the format has been mentioned down here you can go ahead and note down this format will explain you each and every column here so the first column refers to the amount received any amount that has been received as a float will be mentioned under this column this will be the start of the month or start of the week whatever the tenure is after which will go on the next column date the date column as mentioned earlier will also have the year mentioned in the first of it or whichever month we are starting off will mention the year first so for example if you are dealing with 2019 petty cash book that means we'll be mentioning 2019 under the highlighted column where i'm writing it down right now keep a note of it and make sure this is maintained in all the petty cash books so when we have mentioned the date as I've already mentioned the date here, that's where we'll be mentioning the date. So when we talk about every month analytical petty cash book being mentioned here, this is supposed to be recorded down here. Under and unless this has been recorded, it won't matter how your analytical or chronological order is followed, but it will still be wrong. So make sure the date and the year is mentioned down here. Now that you have already mentioned the date, let's go on to the next column and understand the format further. Particulars will define what is the kind of expense that is being made. So once you have mentioned the date and the year, you'll further go ahead with mentioning the kind of expenses that is being done for. So the first three columns, amount, will include the amount of flow that I have received at the start of the month. Second column will be date and third column will be particulars. Let's go on to the next column that is voucher number. If at all the voucher number details are provided to you, then you can go ahead and figure out or make sure that voucher number details are entered in here and after which you'll go ahead with the next column that is total amount. So you'll have different expenses being made for different heads. Now when we talk about different expenses being made for different heads, there is a total amount that is mentioned. For example, if you have made payment of rupees 100 towards postage, You'll mention the amount of rupees 100 in the total column itself. That means total amount column. However, that same amount will also go under the head of postage. So as I've mentioned the other four columns there, this is just for example, there might be different kind of heads that you might be dealing with. It might be postage, it might be storage, it can be stationary, it can be any kind of expenses towards food, conveyors, etc. However, all these heads will come under one column itself. So when we talk about postage, stationery, ink, gum, paper, rubber, any kind of things, you can classify them under one order. You can put them down under one sheet itself. So these are the different heads. So the amount that you have mentioned, for example, let's take postage and I'll mention that down. So in the question, if we have postage in the question if we have stationery if we have food conveyance or travel then we have mentioned all the heads down there you have to prepare this before you start with the answers so if you have mentioned for postage or to postage rupees 100 that same amount will be mentioned under the postage column that will give you the total of how many expenses have been made towards postage this is the only reason why different heads have been classified further so the amount that has been mentioned as 100 under the postage column is equivalent to the total amount spent towards it. Hence, the amount which will be finalized at the end of the week or end of the month will give you the total of the total amount that you have paid towards expenses out of the float amount 
and the different heads which will be further analyzed as to how much has been paid towards postage, how much has been paid towards stationery, how much has been paid towards ink, how much has been paid towards food, conveyance, etc. So the number of heads, that's the number of transactions or that's the number of columns that will be making. So we'll go ahead and further do one specific illustration which will give you more details on this. Let's go ahead and figure that out. The illustration says, record the transactions under analytical petty cash book of Mr. Sushil. Now, Mr. Sushil is the person of whose we have to make the analytical petty cash book. There are certain transactions that are already mentioned under chronological order. You have to go and make sure that you note down all the heads and you note down all the transactions under analytical petty cash book. We'll be noting down this illustration. So let's go through each and every detail that has been mentioned so that you can also note it down and you can prepare the format in the meantime. It states on the 1st April 2013, cashier started with a float amount of 1,500. That means the start or the opening balance was 1,500 that he had. Out of that 1,500, he has made certain expenses and that has been recorded beneath. So let's go ahead and figure that out or what are the transactions that have been mentioned here. Let's figure out the first one. On 1st of April, expense towards postage stamp of rupees 50 was made. Make sure you note down these transactions. Let's go on to the next one. He has also paid on 3rd of April sweeper salary or sweeper expenses rupees 25. He has paid that amount. Let's figure out what is there in the next date. He has given conveyance to his manager, that means travel expenses to his manager, 457 rupees on 5th of April. That means he has paid something which is related to travel. Now let's figure out the next transaction that is mentioned in the date below. April 6, telegram expenses, rupees 66. April expenses, that means telegram expenses, rupees 44 has been mentioned down there. Let's go on to the next date. Stationary expenses on April 7, 68 rupees. Lorry was hired on 10th of April for rupees 250. That means a truck or travel thing was hired for rupees 250 on April 10th. April 13th, cartage on goods sold rupees 75. That means some courier expenses, so some travel expenses was maintained on goods which was amounting to rupees 75. That has been mentioned down here. Repairs for cycle rupees 30 on April 18th has been mentioned. I hope you have recorded all these transactions. Now we'll go on the next sheet where we have different transactions related to this specific sum itself. Hence, we'll be going on the next sheet and we'll be seeing what are the details have been mentioned for all these transactions as it is for the whole month and not for a few weeks. April 19, Mr. Sushi has spent around service charges for rupees 75. April 22, ink and gum, rupees amount 23. That means 23 rupees has been spent towards ink and gum on April 22. On April 24, advertising charges of rupees 100 has been spent out of the float amount. On April 27, subscription amount to some magazine or something has been fed of rupees 125. That means Mr. Sushil has given out subscription amount of rupees 125, which is related to any specific subscription that he might be having on April 28th. On April 27, subscription amount of rupees 125 has been given by Mr. Sushil. This can be any amount which is related to subscription that Mr. Sushil must have opted for. Hence, on 27th of April, he has given out 127 out of this float amount. And the last expense, April 28, T expenses rupees 12. I hope you have noted down all these transactions because after this, we'll be going and preparing the format of analytical petty cash book under all these taggings. Let's go ahead and figure out the taggings first. 
So I'm getting back the old sheet so that you can go ahead with the travel reference or we can make down the taggings under one category. So what we have done is that despite we know that there are a lot of transactions here, we have classified them under similar categories. So what we have done basically is that all the transactions which are related to postage, stationery are classified under one group. That means postage, telegram will be a part of postage, stationery will be a part of stationery, cartage will be a part of cart. However, any expenses that are paid towards sweeper, manager, any expenses that are paid for repairs will be classified as miscellaneous expenses because in a page here, we don't have that many columns to prepare. However, in your exam, you will prepare every column for all these details. That means sweeper will have their own column. Travel expenses that conveyance to us manager will have their own column. However, in this sheet, as we have a restricted background, hence we have mentioned this under different categories. Let's go on to the next sheet and figure out which categories do they fall into. So now that you've recorded all these transactions under different categories, we'll go ahead and prepare the format for your reference. Let's prepare the format and in the meantime, you can also go ahead and prepare the format of your own. So we have different accounts that we have mentioned here. First being postage, second being miscellaneous, third being subscription, fourth being cartridge, fifth being stationery, sixth being the expenses which are also a part of miscellaneous. So let's down or let's note down here and then you can prepare the specific format. So the first one will be postage. So we have five different heads under which will be classifying these transactions. So let's figure out how to prepare the format and then we'll try and solve these questions. So now that we have prepared the format whereby we have all the headings highlighted, we'll go ahead and underline them so that you can have clear identification of them. Amount received is the amount that you have received as a float amount. The next will be date. After which we'll have particulars which will include the description of the transaction. We have voucher number and total amount as the next columns. And after that, we have the five different heads for our references. That means postage, miscellaneous, stationery, cartridge, and subscription. Let's go ahead and record the transactions first. Now, this refers to Mr. Shushil and this refers for the month of April. Now this refers to the year 2013 and for the month of April 1st. So on 1st of April, he started off with the amount of 1,500, which will be received or which will be recorded under the amount received column. So let's go ahead and record that transaction there. To opening balance. That means the cashier had opening balance of 1,500 rupees. Now let's record the first transaction which referred to postage. Now this transaction refers to postage or the stamps that were purchased. Hence, this specific transaction has been mentioned as two postage, total amount 50. Now as this goes under the category of postage, we'll also record the transaction there. That means same amount will be mentioned under the column of postage. Let's go on to the next transaction, which refers to April 3rd. What do we have in there? We have sweeper charges that were paid out. Now sweeper goes under the category of miscellaneous as we have selfly categorized them. So let's put the amount there and we'll mention that thing.
Now sweeper charges were classified under the category of miscellaneous. Hence, this amount will be recorded in the column of miscellaneous as well. Let's record the transaction which has been mentioned for the April 5th, that is 5th of April. We have recorded the transaction. We'll go ahead and mention that amount and see which category it falls into. To conveyance 457. Again, conveyance is falling as a part of miscellaneous, hence we'll record this transaction there. Now on April 6th, we have telegram expenses, which we have classified under the category of postage. We'll record the transaction and we'll also record the same transaction under the postage category. So the telegram expenses has been mentioned as a piece 44 under this category. Let's understand the next transaction and record it down. Now the next transaction refers to April 7 to stationery. Hence, we have recorded the amount under total column as well as under the stationery column itself. Let's figure out the next transaction and note it down. On April 10th, we had hired lorry and that was a part of miscellaneous expenditures. Hence, the total amount of 250 has been recorded under the total column as well and under the miscellaneous column as well. Let's figure out the next few transactions. So we'll record down the transactions until April 13th and then we'll go ahead with the explanation. So on April 13th, we have cartage paid on goods which is amounting to rupee 75 that has been recorded in the amount column as well as in the cartridge column. On April 18th, we have repairs for cycles made for rupees 30, which is a part of miscellaneous expenses. Hence, we have recorded that transaction under total column as well as under miscellaneous column. Now, let's go ahead and record all the transactions which are mentioned on the next sheet. We'll record the transactions from 19th April until 20th April and then we'll further go ahead with the explanation. So now that we have recorded all the transactions from April 19th until April 20th, whereby they have been recorded in the total column as well and under the segregated column as well, we'll go ahead and total the amount which is the following or probably the total of all the total amounts. That means the total column has a total of certain expenses that has been made. We'll total that out and see how much balance has been left. So we have figured out that we have a balance of 166 rupees left because the total of all the expenses made were rupees 1334. Now this 1334 is the total of balance that has been made or the total of expenses that has been made for the month of April. We had the starting balance of 1500 out of which 1334 subtracted gives you the total of 166. So now this is the balance that is left which will be carried forward in the next month and again the amount reimbursed will be added up to it that means 1334 will be added and hence we'll have the starting point as 1500 again. So I hope this is pretty clear how an analytical petty cash book is prepared under impressed system whereby you have certain opening balances, you have certain expenses made the total of all that expenses is subtracted from the opening balance and whatever balance is left is carried forward to the next month. Hence, in the next month, 
the amount of expenses which has been made in the previous month will be reimbursed and the total of impressed balance will be reinstated. That means the total of float will be reinstated. This is how the analytical petty cash book system is supposed to be prepared with total amounts and different heads under which you can classify them and further go ahead with the preparation of that. If in case required, you can also total down the different heads that we have followed. Let's go ahead and total the amount there. So if you can see, we have totaled all the heads as well, which will give you an expense or which will give you details of how many miscellaneous expenses or how miscellaneous expense is high as compared to other heads. That means postage, stationery, cartridge, subscription and any other expenses that is compared or when compared to miscellaneous expenses, miscellaneous expense is going higher side. Then if in case if it is required, they can further audit into detail as to why these expenses are going on the higher side or if it has the same trend as compared to the previous month, then it is absolutely fine. But this is how the analytical petty cash book is prepared. So thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with eGrida and keep subscribing to eGrida.